It's July 5th, the day after. The day after, July 4th. What happened on July 4th? And what happened leading up to the 4th of July? Yes, hamburgers and hot dogs on the 4th of July are a lot of fun, but it's about much, much more. Wait till you hear all the interesting history held in the state of Virginia. What presidents were born there? What presidents died there? And what presidents died on the exact same day? That would be July 4th. The state of Virginia has been the birthplace and the final resting place of many historic Americans. And I want to tell you about several of them today. The Algonquin, the Iroquois, and the Sioux tribes dominated the region for centuries prior to European exploration. The Powhatan Confederacy, under the leadership of Chief Powhatan, was a wonderful empire that controlled the area of present-day Richmond. And we will be going to Richmond in a few days and wait till you see the videos we'll be putting out. The London Company sent 104 colonists aboard the Susan Constant, Godspeed and Discovery, commanded by Captain Christopher Newport. They founded the first permanent English settlement as Jamestown on May 14, 1607. That same year, Captain Newport explored the James River, which flowed from Richmond to the coast, and we will be getting to the James River and showing you pictures of this famous river. The first two ships returned to England with Captain Newport and the discovery remained for the colonists' use. After many deaths and settlements burning in 1608, Jamestown was destined to be abandoned. Thomas West, 3rd Baron de la War, aided the failing colony in June 1610 with men and provisions. The Commonwealth of Virginia, the largest of the 13 colonies, was named the Colony and Dominion of Virginia for Queen Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen. During her reign, England first attempted to colonize North America. King Charles II dubbed the state's nickname. Cape Henry and Cape Charles were named for the sons of King James I. In 1619, the House of Burgess was created, which was the first democratically elected legislature in the New World and is the oldest legislative body in the country. Colonists attempted to settle up river, but the Powhatans attacked with vigor, causing the colonists to retreat. Chief Powhatan's brother, Chief Opanakakano led many devastating massacres against the colonists to inhibit their expansion over the following decades. Eventually, colonists gained supremacy over the natives' empire. All or part of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia were carved out of what was originally the Virginia colony. On May 15, 1776, Virginia declared itself an independent state with Patrick Henry serving as its first governor. Virginia entered statehood on June 25, 1788 by ratifying the United States Constitution. In 1790, Virginia and Maryland ceded land to form the District of Columbia as the United States capital. From 1624 to 1699, Jamestown served as the first capital with four different state houses. Williamsburg was the second capital. William Byrd II founded Richmond at the falls of the James River in 1737, and for security reasons, Governor Thomas Jefferson relocated the capital to Richmond at the beginning of the American Revolution. Thomas Jefferson influenced the design of the capital, which we will be taking you to soon. Have you subscribed? Please subscribe. It was modeled after the Maison Carie, a Roman temple in Nimes, France. Governor Patrick Henry was in attendance when the cornerstone was laid for the structure in 1785. The capital is the second oldest working capital in the nation. Wait till you see it. Richmond also served as the second capital of the Confederate States of America from 1861 to 1865. And what about the first president, George Washington? What's his connection with Virginia? Well, his birthplace is near Colonial Beach and the George Washington Birthplace National Monument represents a typical tobacco farm and his memorial mansion. He was born there on February 22, 1732. Washington died on December 14, 1799 of pneumonia at Mount Vernon. He is buried on the estate grounds and we are fortunate to have gone to Mount Vernon. And what about Patrick Henry? Patrick Henry is the patriot famous for his give me liberty or give me death speech. 
delivered at St. John's Church in Richmond in 1775. In attendance on that momentous occasion were Thomas Jefferson and soon-to-be commander of the Continental Army, George Washington. You can tour the manicured grounds of the Red Hill Patrick Henry National Memorial, which lies outside of Brooknell. Pathways lead to a giant Osage orange tree, to his carriage house, blacksmith shop, and slave cabin, and the home where Henry died. Patrick Henry died of an intestinal blockage, which was treated with mercury. Yikes. He is buried on the grounds in the family cemetery. And then there's Thomas Jefferson, who was born on April 13, 1743, at Shadwell Estate in Goochland County. Jefferson's accomplishments include being a lawyer, a planter, a writer, a scientist, an architect, a philosopher, a surveyor, in the Virginia House of Burgesses, a Virginia governor, founder of the Democratic Republican Party, delegate to the Continental Congress, Secretary of State, Minister to France, Vice President, first president inaugurated in Washington, D.C., and founder of the University of Virginia. As president at the time of the Louisiana Purchase, he propelled America's manifest destiny to conquer the West. His image is carved on Mount Rushmore, along with George Washington's. His home near Charlottesville, Monticello, remains a showplace honoring the third U.S. president. It is a beautiful place, and we enjoyed our tour of Monticello. Or Monticello, however you would like to say it. At age 57, Jefferson tied Aaron Burr in the election for presidency. As provided for in the United States Constitution, the U.S. House of Representatives chose the winner. And they chose Thomas Jefferson, who served in the high office for two terms. Jefferson's eldest child, Martha Jefferson Randolph, served as White House hostess for her dad. Jefferson's wife had died 20 years earlier. Martha had 12 children, including the first child born in the White House. Jefferson retired to his home at Monticello, where he died of diarrhea on the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. He had eloquently drafted. It's not all about hot dogs, fireworks, and hamburgers. He is buried at Monticello. So he died on July 4th. How poetic. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, was born on March 16, 1751, at Port Conway. Over the course of his long life, he was a lawyer, delegate to the Continental Congress, Virginia legislator, delegate to the Constitutional Convention, writer of the Federalist Papers, leader in the effort for the Bill of Rights, U.S. Congressman and Secretary of State. Inaugurated at 57 years old, he was a member of the Democratic Republican Party. He served from 1809 to 1817 as the fourth U.S. President. While in office, Madison signed the Treaty of Ghent that ended the War of 1812, and he died on June 28, 1836 of debility at his home, Montpelier. He is buried on the estate grounds alongside his wife, Dolly, in the family plot. Remember Dolly Madison? She's the one who saved the portrait of George Washington when the White House burned. And then there's James Monroe, who was born on April 28, 1758, near Colonial Beach in Westmoreland County. At 58 years old and a member of the Democratic Republican Party, he became the fifth U.S. president, serving from 1817 to 1825. He also served in the capacity of a writer, lawyer, Southern Army military commissioner, Virginia legislator, and twice governor, U.S. senator, minister to France, minister to England, secretary of state, secretary of war, and regent for University of Virginia. He negotiated the Louisiana Purchase in Paris for President Jefferson and signed the rush Bagot Agreement of 1817, establishing the 49th parallel as the boundary of the U.S. and Canada. During his presidency, Florida was purchased from Spain, and he authored the Monroe Doctrine. He died of debility on July 4, 1831, in New York City, and he is buried at Hollywood Cemetery along the James River in Richmond. William Henry Harrison, old Tippecanoe, was born on February 9, 1773, at Berkeley Plantation in Charles City County. He was known as an Indian fighter and commander of the War of 1812, the Major General Commander of the Northwest, Secretary of the Northwest Territory, Indiana Territorial Governor, Superintendent of Indian Affairs, Hero of the Battle of Tippecanoe, Ohio State Senator, U.S. Representative and Senator, Minister to Columbia, and a member of the Whig Party. At the age of 68, he became the ninth U.S. President. 
After catching a cold at his presidential inauguration, he died of pneumonia in Washington, D.C. on April 4, 1841, one month after his inauguration. He was the first president to die in office. Isn't Virginia just loaded with history? It's amazing, isn't it? The day after, July 4th, we're learning all of this. Have you subscribed? Please subscribe. John Tyler was born on March 29, 1790 at Greenway in Charles City County. His plantation home, Sherwood Forest, is 300 feet long, making it the longest frame house in the country. He became the 10th U.S. President at the age of 51 as a member of the Whig Party, serving from 1841 to 1845. His other accomplishments include lawyer, Virginia legislator, Virginia governor, U.S. senator, the first vice president to become president after the death of his predecessor, and signing the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, admitting Texas to the Union. Thanks, President Tyler. John Tyler died on January 18, 1862, of bilious fever in Richmond. Like President Monroe, as well as Confederate President Jefferson Davis, Tyler is buried at Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond. I bet you can't wait to see that video about Hollywood Cemetery. Zachary Taylor, yeah, it goes on. It's unbelievable. Zachary Taylor was born on November 24, 1784, at Montebello at Barbersville before he became the 12th U.S. President. It's almost like Virginia had a monopoly on this, isn't it? He was a soldier, a farmer, a Kentucky militia volunteer, and a major general in the U.S. Army. A member of the Whig Party, he served as president for 16 months. He was the second president to die in office, dying on July 9th, that's coming up, in 1850, of a coronary thrombosis in Washington, D.C. And now we have Woodrow Wilson, who was born on December 28, 1856, in Staunton, located in the Appalachian Mountains. And we have been to his presidential museum there. Staunton is a great town to tour. He served as governor of New Jersey and was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. At 56 years old, he became the 28th U.S. president. He died of apoplexy on February 3, 1924, and is buried at the Washington Cathedral. And I want to mention some of my favorite historical figures were also born in Virginia. And they include John Day, Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, Sam Houston. You'll want to watch my videos on Sam Houston and the videos on Stephen F. Austin. Sam Houston and Stephen F. Austin were huge rivals. Booker T. Washington and more information about Virginia will be coming up in upcoming videos when we visit Richmond. Although not born in Virginia, I do want to mention John Adams for this one amazing fact. As one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, it made sense that John Adams served as the first U.S. Vice President under President George Washington. Inaugurated at Federal Hall in Philadelphia, Adams became the second U.S. President. But this is what I wanted to tell you. Saying the name Jefferson as he was dying of debility, Adams was unaware that his compatriot, Thomas Jefferson, had gone before him in death by only a few hours at Monticello in Virginia. Adams died at his home in Quincy at the age of 90 on July 4, 1826, the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams are the only two men to have served as president and to have signed the Declaration of Independence. Simply amazing history. July 5th, the day after, July 4th, have you subscribed yet? If you haven't, please subscribe. And if you have, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this lengthy video about the day after July 4th as a celebration of our history and the intriguing role that the state of Virginia has played in American history. It's about much more than hot dogs, hamburgers, and fireworks. Leave a comment below. And again, I wanna remind you, we'll be going to Richmond this weekend and we'll be posting many videos from this historic state. And then we'll be heading towards, well, the capital for more great videos and great information. Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip.